Hey everyone, how's it going? Bowser the Healer here, and today I have a special video. This one comes from the comment section as well, from a user of the name Mrs. Bob's Mom, and they wanted me to do a play-by-play -play of how I heal dungeons. And this has actually been a really fun video to make. I am on a few takes at this point, but there's a lot of good details here. I wanna talk about a couple of important topics about improving your play, because one like kind of high key broken thing that players can do is to watch their footage back to see how they did. So if you have the means to record your gameplay, I highly recommend that you do. And that through that, you watch it back to kind of see what you could have done better. You have to do every run, maybe take a completed run that felt okay or good and just kind of watch it back. You can also watch horrific runs if you'd like and see what went wrong. I think that's good too. Uh, using a mix of details and logs and replays, you can kind of learn anything you want about a dungeon. Okay, so there's two major things I want to talk about. Uh, but before I do that, hey, we're almost at 5k. So get subscribed if you want to help me get there. We already have 4.6k. Thank you all so much. Okay, so the two things to talk about are getting so good that healing is second nature and you can't plan a disaster. So just because this is so important for reviewing my own footage, I'm at the point of play where I don't really think about the buttons I'm pressing. Not that I don't think like, oh, I should throw a temporal anomaly. It's just that I don't go, oh, I should temporal anomaly, look at my bar, figure out what button temporal anomaly is, press it, aim it at the group and hope I get the job done. No, I'm usually seeing something happen. You'll see it here. I'll throw a temporal anomaly before the pull even starts. I'll walk forward to start doing damage, get in range, and then it's off to do damage. It's right. I have a prep period, but I just sort of know what I'm doing. And it's, and it's natural. There are a lot of times when I'm watching my own play where I'll be like, all right, here comes the temporal anomaly. Cause I know what I'm about to do. Get so comfortable with your class that you can heal like that. I know this video is mostly for preservation players, but for, for anyone watching this tanks, DPS, you name it, get so good at your class that it's second nature. Now this just requires time and getting comfortable button setups and maybe making sure your interface is something you can easily glance at so that you can get better at it. This isn't something you need to rush. Mastery is something that happens over time. So make sure you're reviewing like, oh, I'm not using this button or, hey, I need my kick in a place that's more convenient and set yourself up for success and let your, your brain do the rest and it will do the rest. Um, basically every brain knows how to learn. You will learn over time, so be nice to yourself. I know some of you in the comment section. And then also you can't plan for a disaster. So with a group, watch to see how they handle things. This group, we make a few mistakes, but we still time the dungeon. The few mistakes that we make almost cost us the run. I think it would have on a higher key, maybe uh, potentially been a little too tough to recover from, but in a 19, it was fine. Notice what they're doing. Notice how often they're taking extra damage. Are they using defensives and health pots and self-healing? That sort of information will tell you how you should plan your cooldowns. Should you save emergency cooldowns for emergencies? Do you need this to heal a mechanic? Therefore, do you hold it for a disaster? How long can you hold it for? That's information that as you get comfortable with the dungeons, you'll get better at remembering. You'll be like, hey, I need this cooldown for this boss fight coming up. Okay, which means I'm going to save stasis for a disaster because I don't need stasis in order to, you know, clear that boss mechanic. And so then you've got a game plan for if something goes wrong. If things go right, great. If things go wrong, you have something. Hopefully it'll be enough. Now, I want to do the third and fourth boss of this dungeon and then two bosses from Neltheris, but I want to actually talk about a mistake I make here. Let's talk about a simple concept that is, I mean, I might make a whole video on, but I want to talk about something I need to improve on. And it's something that I've been doing good about, but this was a situation where I didn't. Do you see the damage we just took from the croak? I want you to ask yourself, was that lethal? I'll play the moment back again. And the answer is no. I have a double dream breath going, so there is some counteracting to the damage going on right now. But no, that didn't appear to be lethal in the slightest. Okay, great. So that means all I need to heal is to let these heal over times do their job. And if I'm worried and I'm doing it right now, hit a little spirit bloom action, get everyone topped off. And as long as the boss doesn't hit an enrage, which by the way, just get hit by gulp. If you if your tank doesn't want to get hit by gulp, walk in there and take it. It does not hurt that much, I promise you. Just make sure this boss eats a player so that the enrage doesn't happen. But uh, then Toxic Effluvia shouldn't do more damage. There shouldn't be any problems here. And the boss fight should be fairly easy, which is what makes my next decision a little weird. Because for this overpowering croak, I Temporal Anomaly 
and then I Verdant Embrace Emerald Communion. Okay, yeah, it's it's an amazing heal, right? It, it's going to full heal the party, get me all my mana back, etc. But I don't need to get all my mana back. And well, I already established that I don't need anything crazy here because that mechanic is non-lethal. So what's the point of this? Why am I using this? I could have maybe used a Zephyr or something to reduce damage if I was worried I was late to a heal. And I do remember that I was unprepared for the heal. So I immediately went to Emerald Communion. If I had recognized that the mechanic wasn't lethal, then I never would have had to have panicked to go for Emerald Communion. Now, this isn't a huge deal because I, the next time I need Emerald Communion is in the next boss fight. However, what if this is fortified? And we, I might need it on the dragons if something disastrous happens, right? Mm, okay, then I'm going to want, have wish I didn't use this move. Was it a bad thing? It wasn't horrendous. No, it's, this isn't going to kill a run, but this is something that I could have held on to in case of an emergency that I used for seemingly no reason. If the dungeon is like a 13, which is significantly easy for me, right? Like I'm I'm not going to sweat in a 13. I might use my cooldown on the wrong spot for fun to be lazy, right? Like because I'm not going to need it for anything. But in a key like even a 19 Halls of Infusion, uh, OK, you know what? I probably don't need it, but maybe I should consider holding on to it. OK, let's talk about this next boss. First of all, always try to have just about maximum mana walking in here. Most healing classes will uh, run through their mana on this boss fight. I pre-temporal anomaly to set up my combo. And then here's the secret sauce to this boss fight. Try not to waste any heals. So try to make sure you're almost always getting full potency out of every single heal. You're not topping people off needlessly. The biggest offender of this is to use spirit bloom when people are still at 80% health when realistically they can get to about 30 or 40% health and then maybe you should spirit bloom to get them back up. I'm going to Fire Breath to start, then a Dream Breath so that we have a double Dream Breath running, and that's going to help deal with the incoming damage over time. I Zephyr because I always think it's an AoE effect, but it's a debuff. So after pressing this, I kind of tell myself, like, why'd you do that? There's almost nothing in this fight that Zephyr can actually save you from, but I do actually save someone with Zephyr uh, in a little bit. But otherwise, I do some damage, Spirit Bloom to heal everyone up to mostly full, Temporal Anomaly to set myself up for later, and then I start doing damage, Disintegrate, to restore my mana. I disintegrate almost, I do damage because damage is important, but anything to keep my mana up because mana is important. Now I do have Rashok's heart, so that's also helping with mana management here, but I tend to play like I don't have it because I I prefer to be ready for anything. So this is sort of my style of play. I Temporal Anomaly into Dream Breath. Now notice this, I actually start casting Dream Breath, cancel it, then Temporal Anomaly Dream Breath because I realized that the move was about to be up. That kind of awareness is, very important because that's a much more efficient heal. However, I also could have used it on the Spirit Bloom and I likely wouldn't have wasted any air quotes potency. So it's not bad if I get that combo wrong, just that those combos are doing their full damage. AMZ goes down. I use a Temporal Anomaly to Living Flame to heal some people up a little bit. You know, just kind of top people off while I'm waiting for my cooldowns as we all run around. I don't like how low people are, so I'm hitting some reversions and some Verdant Embraces just to get everyone back up to full and we're chilling again. Another Dream Breath to cover us. This time I don't use Temporal Anomaly. Uh, not always perfect with it, of course. So I reversion the tank because they take a little bit of damage and otherwise we're just big chilling here. I know right now I'm going to set up a Emerald Communion because I do have cooldowns I want to catch back up. And so Emerald Communion is a nice thing to use partway into this fight to sort of reset our health bars, re get myself as much mana as possible and now the boss fight should be pretty easy. I should be on a flow that should make its way all the way to the end of the boss fight. OK, so here I end up doing a really bad stasis. The stasis is bad for a very different reason than you might think. This spirit bloom probably should have been in the stasis and that would have been a little more efficient of me. Uh, and that's just a little bit of an oops and easy. But my rule with stasis is to always have something in there like one big button, right? A full charge spirit bloom, a dream breath, or a temporal anomaly. That's sort of my go-to. And as long as one of those exists in there, most stasis is fine. But in this scenario, I end up doing a really weird one. I end up hitting stasis, and then I give, I think, an echo out and a reversion, and then I throw a temporal anomaly. This isn't the most effective stasis, but again, having another temporal anomaly will allow me to get a decent amount of extra healing, maybe say from a verdant embrace, so I could so I could press a button to pop this combo for TA, 
then I could hit Stasis, then I could hit Verdant Embrace, and that would actually be a pretty chunky heal. And I would call that a totally fine Stasis for a boss fight like this. If I want to set the Stasis up for a bigger mechanic, I'd want to have like Spirit Bloom, Dream Breath, Temporal Anomaly, so that the combo ends with Temporal Anomaly, which will set me up for when I actually use the Stasis to continue healing out of it, which is really time efficient. None of that happens here. I should have popped these the Stasis. Stasi? Should have popped this Stasis. But I end up letting it rip here as we dash over because I didn't realize that we already had the TA effect on us. Like, I just forgot. And then I end up popping Zephyr because I was a little worried about this DK not making it and they barely make it. So I guess I'm happy I hit Zephyr for that. But that wasn't the best use of stasis. Good to call yourself out when you make mistakes like that. Having just a TA in it isn't, again, the end of the world, but not utilizing it was a little weird. But... I dispel, I set up our next heal, and then I realize that the boss is kind of low. So after a bit of living flame maintenance and healing people, Spirit Bloom tip the scales just to top us off. I realize, oh, we're good, and I can just do damage. And then after th I realize after that disintegrate, I'm not going to be able to get another disintegrate off before the boss dies. So I throw a temporal anomaly to help top everyone off which is super efficient, but I don't remember having that thought. That is something that I have trained myself to do. That is something that is second nature, but I don't, I, like this is a recent recording. I do not remember actively thinking, oh, you know what? I should do this. So I think it just goes to show the importance of getting so good at something that it becomes second nature. Again, something, a, a goal to strive for. Also, I end up changing my details here to the current fight and yeah i ended up doing basically 140k healing per second on that fight there are other boss fights that i want us to focus on so i want to talk about the tsunami real quick tempest fury on this key level i'm pretty confident isn't going to kill us i don't press anything i don't prepare in any special way other than a temporal anomaly level 2 dream breath to try to top everyone off now notice it wasn't in fact lethal we're all kind of fine after this move lands right okay so that's fine I don't have to worry about a thing. I have defensives. We have Zephyr for next time. Temporal Anomaly would provide a decent shield here. Uh, this isn't a super spooky mechanic. However, let's talk about it later. There isn't a lot of incoming damage, so I use a lazy rewind at some point. Um, but again, not a lot happens. So let's talk about phase two. After dealing with the infusers, another one will go off. And based on this red debuff, or I guess buff here, we're going to take more damage. I don't really trust this, so as you might have noticed, I've already popped a Zephyr so that we take a little less damage. And, okay, that wasn't lethal. It hurt, but it wasn't lethal. So that tells me we're good to go. The next one can rip and the party will be fine. And let me tell you, that is in fact what happens. No one really dies from this. I give some shields out, but we're totally chilling. Okay. Next time, now we're at 29 stacks. I do not know if this is lethal or not. I would assume if you if you put me on a on a on a show and told me I had to get this question right, I would assume it wouldn't kill, but I don't want to risk it. So again, I hit Zephyr and let's see what it does to us this time. And oh, that's a lot of damage. Take 20% of what I just got hit by and add that to the health bar, right? If I took 20% more damage, is that lethal? No, but also not something I really want to play with. I don't really want to know if I will die or not. I don't want to make a mistake in a situation like that. So now I want to make sure that I'm nice and prepped. So typically what I would do here is before the next Tempest Fury, I would throw a Temporal Anomaly through as many people as possible, pop my defensive so that I live, and we should be good. If nobody hits a defensive, hopefully the Temporal Anomaly shield is enough to keep them alive. And with any luck, maybe they've top themselves off and have a shield or have popped a defense of themselves. However, uh, it doesn't matter because the boss dies, which is great news. However, it is very important to remember that sort of thing. I also want to note a very big tip here is I always like to keep a reversion around for a tank. Tanks take a ton of damage and Golden Hour, the passive, does a lot of work when you hit reversion. However, notice how fast my brewmaster here, and this is my friend, 158,000 healing from a reversion yeah you can get some crazy good heals on people um from a single reversion so the very useful button to press does a lot of work for your team so uh just something to keep in mind but let's talk about Neltharis. all right so i end up i want to be completely clear i ended up wiping us on the last version of this pull i i don't know what it was i was just minding my business trying to think of how i might heal something 
a little more efficiently. And I just let one of the swirlies hit me and I just explode. So this is take number two. This this dungeon's a little tighter than I wish it was. Um, and it's all my fault. So I actually make a mistake because of this though. I tip the skills fire breath because again, I'm feeling confident, not my best play. And then I throw a TA and then I try to Verdant Embrace for the commune combo to heal us through Might of the Forge and so that we're all safe. And the answer is, oh, that is probably lethal or close to lethal. And now I gotta heal people up. So I use a Spirit Bloom and then right now there's no incoming damage. So I actually have time to heal. So I throw Living Flames instead of using other cooldowns. I could use Emerald Blossoms and um, potentially my Verdant Embrace here if I wanted. But it's the idea here is after the high damage dot and the high damage hits of Might of the Forge, you actually just have a situation where you don't need to take, you don't need to panic, you can just heal people. So I decide with double rewind, which is the talent I took for this, I can't afford a rewind there. So I Zephyr rewind people so that, you know, the healing's kind of easy. And then it's about healing people back up to full. Time of Need goes off there and helps me heal up the mage, which is very nice. And now we're all full, so I can go back to doing damage and worrying about everything else going on in the fight. This is such a good flow to maintain because it makes this fight easy. And then again, this damage might be lethal, but this time I know I have Emerald Communion, so I can heal us through this and just look at that healing. You get so much value out of that move. And now I should be able to top people off pretty easily after the dots go off. And people still get a little low. I don't like that situation. There were still cauterize on the mage though, so I didn't have to completely worry about them. Um, and dispersion on the priest. So, you know, there was a chance that they could have saved themselves. Uh, Alter Time would have been nice, but was it up? Hold on, can I flame them? No, Alter Time wasn't up. So they weren't able to use that to um, defend this. That's probably why the mage got so low. But rinse and repeat this until the boss dies. It's a scary fight. People will get low in this fight. They need to be good about defensives and health pots. And thankfully this party was. And it gets close because the last boss fight uh, was closer than it ever needed to be. So for the last boss, my first suggestion is prepare. Make sure everyone's full. And then... I use a disintegrate here just to get some mana back, and then I go grab one of the trinkets. I then check what kind of trinket it is. This is one that works within eight yards of impact, so it's good for me to try to cast early as the swirlies first come down, and then find a way out safely if I can. That way I can confirm that I can land the anti-magic bomb. We have four battle reses, um, but we also have no BR in the party. So uh, this is a little risky, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. The clock is ticking, we have two minutes to kill this boss. The mage ends up getting targeted with Molten Gold. So I hit them with a real Echo, um, which I believe they already had on them, and then I Dream Breath them and return to doing damage. I'm going to mix between healing the mage and doing damage. I realize I'm not targeting the add, that's a bit of an oopsie, but help kill this add so that we don't have to deal with it during the next big phase, which is a little more important. But then here comes Magma Shield, so I walk up, I hit my item, and it goes off. Everyone's moves go off and we destroy the shield pretty quickly. Now you might have been like, oh, Bowser, was that a wasted Emerald Communion? Ah, uh, you know, we're at two stacks of the debuff. The third one's going to hit hard and that's going to put the Demon Hunter kind of low. The Mage might also get very low and they do, but I've already decided I'm pressing the button. So this was well worth it. I don't want that third round of damage to happen, but the stun does go off. So if everyone was topped off in the third round of damage happened, we would have been low. But thankfully, that would have been what kept us alive. But it doesn't happen, so we're chilling. It's unfortunate, but I would I much rather take that risk of using Emerald Communion there uh, than using nothing. So then again, it's Molten Gold. It's a lot of the same thing. Check which one I have. I have the really good one. I have the one that just does damage to the shield, so I don't have to think. I can just run around. You can use those while moving, by the way. I'd like to say that for anyone who needs to hear it. So keep this priest upright. Help deal with the ad whenever I can. Here comes Magma Shield, so I let out a Fire Breath of a pretty decent variety. Target the boss, we hit the shield, and it's all good. We can now do damage. My tank gets a little low, so I focus on healing them up, and then I gotta contribute. Now, we need this boss to die before next Magma Shield, so I need to focus on doing damage more than anything, right? If we make it to Magma Shield, it might be a white, uh, might be a, uh, an untimed key. So now I'm like, okay, we're going to blast. So I'm just going to focus on doing damage. Disintegrates our priority here. I just get deep breath off cooldown, which is not a bad idea. Full charge to fire breath because I don't have time to let that dot tick. And everything I got. Disintegrate did get buffed. So if you're running um, energy loop, which I highly recommend, it is your best single target now. Blasting, blasting, blasting. Now notice, 
we did get the spell timer for magma shield, but molten gold has to go off first. So the dot hits me and that's not lethal for, a, you know, 10 or 15 seconds or something like that. So it ended up just giving us enough time and we timed the dungeon. Play by plays are important. Learning how you play is important and calling out your own mistakes away from a run is a very good way of helping yourself get better. I know this was a very long-winded video, but I hope you all enjoyed it nonetheless. I think it's good to get into the mind of a healer and healers will heal differently. If you see the way that I'm playing and you're like, I would never do that, you know, maybe we're just different and there's nothing wrong with that. So keep that in mind as you're learning. And honestly, I hope it helped. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all soon.